Hello everyone, my name is Neeraj Kothari. I am leading a platforms team at Fanatics. Fanatics Inc. is an e-commerce company. We also have a wholesale and retail presence. And in this video, we are going to talk, uh, show you how uh, we, the decisions were made to move to Scylla from Cassandra and how it benefited uh, overall to Fanatics. My name is Neeraj Kothari. Uh, I have been working with Fanatics for last four years. Uh, I'm leading a platforms team over there, and today I'm just going to discuss uh, how, what, what made Fanatics move out of Cassandra for some use cases to move into Scylla. I'll discuss uh, the reasons for um, how scalable and how cost-effective Scylla was for, for Fanatics. That's me. Uh, again, I'm, a, I'm leading a platforms engineering team at Fanatics. Before we get started, who has heard of Fanatics over here? Yeah, a few of you. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, have, you, have you guys ever uh, heard of, do you guys follow any kind of major league sports? Like NFL, NBA? NBA. NBA? Right? If you go to their websites today, nba.com slash shop, and you will, direct, you will be directed to uh, nbashop.com, just for example, or even nflshop.com, they are all powered by Fanatics. You will see at the top left corner, you will see a Fanatics experience. We power their engine. Whatever you see is from merchandising standpoint, that's powered by Fanatics. You, you name any major league, uh, uh, sports event like NBA, NFL, MLB, MLS, NHL, NASCAR, they are all uh, Fanatics partners and we power their engine for all merchandising. We do end-to-end -end solution, starting from manufacturing, going all the way into uh, shipping the products. We have warehouses as well, all across uh, United States and in Europe. So just to quick, uh, quickly give you an overview, uh, Fanatics is a $2 billion plus dollar company. Uh, we have exclusive licensing rights for all major, uh, major leagues uh, and with numerous uh, NCAA uh, partners. We also have the rights to manufacture replica jerseys to meet the on-demand uh, culture that we have today. We also have in-menu uh, retail rights with the top leagues. Fanatics is not only just an e-commerce company. It, we don't only operate online. We also have a strategic retail, wholesale, as well as international. Strategic retail, just to give you some examples. If you guys have been uh, to uh, New York, Manhattan, there is an NBA store. That's biggest uh, NBA store in the entire U United States. That's operated by Fanatics. Same thing with a MLB NHL shop in Manhattan. And now uh, with uh, the new Chase Center that just opened here in SF, we, we are operating the uh, uh, Warriors um, shop, which is one of the biggest in the United States, 10,000 square foot store. Here are some of the examples of what uh, Fanatics partners with. We have over 300 partners worldwide. Shift to mobile. Fanatics is mobile first development philosophy. It has a, a mobile first development philosophy. What does that mean? As you can see, more than 70% of our traffic, platform traffic comes from mobile. More than 50% of our revenue comes from mobile. And during peak times, when I say peak, that means major uh, events, something that just happened last week, which was uh, World Series. The World Series finals, when Washington won, we had a peak, right? When I talk about peak, it's those kinds of peaks. And of course, November and December is our peak season as well, uh, just like any other e-commerce companies. We spike our revenues up to 80% just from mobile. So. What we do is whenever, development, we, whenever we develop a new feature or 
or new, any, new, any updates on the bugs, we actually first test it on mobile and then on other platforms. We have over 40 locations worldwide, over 10,000 employees during peak, again during peak, and most of them are part-time. Uh, they are contractors. Uh, and we, we, as you can see, some of the number of visits, uh, as well as marketing uh, uh, keywords that we purchase. Unique products. This is last year's data, but the new year's data is, this year's data is, we have over 600 unique products, as well as 2 million SKUs for sale. Now, let's get started on what, our journey started back in 2015 when Fanatics was, made a decision to move into, um, into cloud. We had an on-premise uh, on presence, but it was not scalable. So we decided to move into cloud. And while that decision was made, we also decided to um, actually build a new architecture as well as completely bring up a new stack uh, in terms of, from technology standpoint. So one of the things that we did was on-premise, we were using SQL Server and MySQL databases. We wanted to move away from that. So we picked Cassandra at that time. Scylla was still new. It was, uh, they had their first release November 2015, I believe. And that was not even stable either. So we decided to go with Cassandra at that time. What was the use cases for Cassandra? Cassandra is used as an order capture. Anything around order capture, that includes orders that are created, cards that, uh, that are modified, accounts, users, loyalty, promo, all the promo codes that are, uh, that are executed on the site. Uh, order management, which is the downstream application, because we have warehouses as well, right, where the orders are actually fulfilled. <coughs> order visibility, uh, rate limiting, and so on. We have so many other use cases that are current, that were still this year, they were on Cassandra. So what were the issues that we faced uh, with Cassandra. First of all, if, if we go back to the previous slide, the second use case, cart mutations. This was a major pain point for us. We did not realize how bad it could get. So large wide rows, every time think about it, a user comes online, they change their carts, they add new items to their cart, every time we actually stored the cart mutation because of analytics, as well as for debugging. We wanted to know why did the user actually left their cart and, and left fanatics.com site. Um, so that was the reason why we were pushing all these uh, cart mutations, and that was actually causing a lot of issues. Because Cassandra has a limitation in terms of, I mean, it's not Cassandra, it's, it's uh, the JVM, causing frequent GC uh, pauses which caused, uh, which forced us to actually scale our, our Cassandra cluster by n, by n times. For example, I'll give you some example. Last year we had Cassandra stack scaled up during around the same time to about 55 node cluster. CPU spikes when compacting these wide rows. So all the mutations that were stored in Cassandra, they were all in, in a wide row. And when a, new, when a modification happened, there was a compaction that caused the CPU spike, resulting into numerous uh, timeouts from the client side. Again, due to the large cluster sites, it increased our EC2 cost. It increased our total uh, cost of uh, ownership and longer maintenance, node, uh, maintenance time, time. Whenever we needed to do a rolling restart, it took four or five hours. So that was also a pain point. So what did we do? Moving to Scylla, just moving one use case this year. We moved cart mutation use case from Cassandra into Scylla, and we got a huge benefit out of it. Cut in Cassandra cl cluster by more than 50%, and this is, I think 50% is too low to say. To be honest, as of today, we have only 12 node cluster which was 55 node cluster last year. 
drastic reduce, uh, reduction in uh, EC2 cost, reduced uh, total cost of ownership, almost zero timeouts. We just had, a, as I said, we had a, a, um, a hot market last week. And uh, during the peak minute, we saw around close to 180,000 IOPS just for one, one minute, for example. And we had zero timeouts. And we just have a three node SILA cluster. Of course, we have, because of that, we had happier customers and uh, application teams. So what, how do we manage Scylla at uh, Fanatics? We have built a lot of tools, and my team also owns part of the pipeline for deploying your applications in the cloud. So we have built uh, homegrown tools, we call it Cloud Keeper. And we have made automations in such a way that with just two commands from Slack, it is integrated with Slack, the deployment tool. With just two commands from Slack, you can actually bring up the entire Scylla or Cassandra cluster. We follow uh, regular procedures just like how we do it for Cassandra. Node to node, client to node encryption is there. Uh, all the data stored uh, at rest in, in Cassandra is also encrypted. We use ENI for cluster and SID uh, node discovery. So this I'll talk about a little, a, bit, a little bit more in the next slide. I'm, I'm pretty sure everyone is aware of what ENI is, uh, but I'll still just mention what we do with it. We use standard ASG and ASG hooks, um, auto-scaling groups, of course, where, and ASG hooks. What, what do they do? How does ASG hooks help us? When a node goes down, we want to find out what happened to that node, right? Some, sometimes uh, AWS just yanks a node out from your cluster. And we want to know exactly what happened to that node. What was the root cause? So SG hook actually helps us to keep that node alive for, say, 90 minutes. And we can go in. If we want to recover any data, we want to look at what happened, we can, we can use these SG hooks for that. We have homegrown tools that we manage uh, that we have created to actually do all the rolling restarts, maintenance on, uh, on um, Scylla and Cassandra clusters, as well as we can apply patches using this tool. This is similar to what AWS has, but it's a paid solution. Uh, but the time when we created this uh, solution, it was, uh, they didn't have this, uh, AWS did not have this solution. It is called uh, System Manager, I believe. We use Scylla Monitor for monitoring. Uh, it's hooked to PagerDuty. We have Scylla Manager for data repairs. OK, so how do we use ENI? When a, when a seed node, as I said, there are two commands that we just send right uh, to, through Slack. So the first thing is the seed node comes up. Seed node goes and attaches itself to an ENI. It broadcasts the ENI static IP to everyone for discovery. So when a non-SID node joins or a regular node joins, it will discover this ENI IP and join as a cluster. Now how does that help? When a SID node goes down and a new SID node comes up, it will again reattach itself to the same ENI, which has the same IP. That way we don't have to go to other, all other nodes, non-SID nodes, to go and update the IPs. So that helps in terms of uh, recovery process. Uh, I'll quickly talk about this commando tool. The tool that I was just referring to for, that we are using for uh, a maintenance task or rolling restarts, this was, uh, this was out of a need. When we moved uh, from Cassandra 2.x to 3.x, op center was no longer available. So at that time, we had Cassandra, 55 node Cassandra cluster. How do you go about, going, go about and do a rolling restart on those 55 node cluster? This is a small cluster compared to what eBay has or even what other companies have. So we had to build our own tooling around it. There was nothing available in the open source market. And this tool will be, we are planning to open source it next year. Uh, of course, we need approval from, uh, from the legal and other, other, uh, other channels. 
So what, what is this tool? It's a UI-based tool just like Op Center. Tool manages stateful and stateless applications. It can do rolling restarts. It, it can actually gather logs across all the, all the VMs that you specify just based on the DNS. It has a pub sub mechanism using Kafka, and it uses RDS uh, for persistence. Um, of course, we also follow all the regular uh, TLS-based communication. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a REST uh, API calls. So the UI ma basically makes a REST API call, and the REST uh, and that service internally uses Kafka for publishing and subscribing to, the, uh, to these events.